morning, Markets Kickoff, with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We get the markets kicking things off in negative territory. You're looking at an S&P right now, negative by 47 points. We start that acceleration. Basically, it was a drift lower from 4 p.m. Eastern time. Things really start dropping at about 1 in the morning. You're at 38.10 at that price point. You trade down about 40 points from there. We've been chopping around at about 37.70 for most of the session for the last six hours or so since about 2.30. Uh, basically, since Europe's been open, chopping around since about 37.70. NASDAQ 100, you're off 1.3%. The S&Ps are off 1.2%. The Dow right now off 1.1% as well. And you're looking at a Russell negative by 1.5%. Jumping back to the NASDAQ 100 real quick. You're trading at 11,535. Now, I talked about on my program on Monday, I believe it was. I talked about all of these areas of confluence that we have. Excuse me, let me get that back. We back this up in confluence, folks, isn't it? An area of a Fibonacci retracement, okay, that is two different trends. So you're talking about the longer term trend, which is the whole acceleration, remarkable to say, from a November of 2008, or even you're talking about the beginning of 2009 in the S&P, the low, you trade up to 16,767. Now, this is the NASDAQ 100. When I was talking to my dad about this, he made a great point. He pulled out the comp. The comp basically almost hit it. I'll pull the comp up in a moment. Uh, the point being, though, you're talking about a price level of 10,750. That is the 382 retracement, folks, of the entire move higher. And it's almost crazy to say that you're talking about a move from 1,000 to almost 17,000. Did you hear that right? That's a 17 bagger almost. Uh, almost. We made it to 16,767. But guess what, folks? We go from 1,000 to almost 17,000. Never say the market can't do a 382. Sometimes it just looks so big on a chart. But nonetheless, we came within. We reached a low of 11,068. The 382 is 10,751. You're talking about only 300 points in the NASDAQ 100 from that level. Right now, you're sitting about 750 points away from that level. Uh, and you put this thing on a weekly, just for some context here. I just said we're sitting 750 points away from where we are in the 382. This week alone, you're down 750 points from the high, trading at 11,537. The high was 12,262. Keep it in mind, folks. And what is the, the, the comp? Is that the comp? There it is. Okay, so check this out. If you pull up the comp, which on the Thicker Swim platform, it's the entire NASDAQ composite, dollar sign COMP, you do the same exact thing and you put this thing on a monthly, okay, you got lows, now, the comp made a low in March of 2009 at 12,065. The comp made it as high as 16,212. I may sneeze here. Here we go. Excuse me. And check out the comp. It basically did it. You made it within about 60 points. Six zero is all. The comp, the 3A2 is about 10,500. You make it down to a low of 10,565. How about that, folks? So when you think that a market can't do it, okay, the NASDAQ's the one that's been leading us down first. It'll probably be the one that makes a low first because it's been paying the penalty so harshly for some of the multiples that it's had. Not as sure that it's going to happen, but that's the way it's happened previously. Uh, you're talking about NASDAQ 100, negative 150 points at 11,541. You basically hit the 382 of the entire run you had higher from 2009. If that happens in the S&Ps, folks, 3,200 is where this market would come back to. Uh, a lot of talk of that 3,200 price point. We'll see if it happens, but put it on your radar. Uh, well within reasonable when you got a market right now. Again, let's put that on a weekly. Okay, you're talking about a market that is almost 200 points off its high right now, and 3,200 is less than 600 points from where you are. You were trading in this market, folks, a month ago at 4,200. Nothing stopping this market getting from 3,200. We'll see what happens. All right, we jump to commodities. We got crude backing off a bit. We'll pull up the short-term time frame. Crude makes it to 114.05 yesterday. You're back to 109.02. For some context here, let's back it up a little bit further. When you're talking about a Fibonacci retracement, let's take the lows that we had 
a week ago Wednesday. We go to the highs of 114, and you're basically chopping around right at the 382 of that retracement right now. You did make it as low as 108.23. We're up back at 109, but you see this area kind of chopping around to 382. We'll see where we go. The 618, if we break this area, you're talking about 106.25 in the crude contract. Gold contract this morning. There's a little action for you. That's an hourly. You put it to a 15-minute. There's some action for you. So that's going to be on some inflation data that we got at 830. I'll jump to that in a moment. But we have the gold contract right now up $5 at 1822. And we jump to notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield. The 10-year up 19 ticks. How about jumping right to where we were a week ago, folks? 11808. What did we just hit? 11808. We back it up a little bit further than that. That's the area that you sold off from. On June 10th, maybe an area we bump into a little bit of resistance. We back this up further on a daily. You see that that is the area that we're talking about where we fell out of bed on June 10th. That's the high that we recently had in price on the 10-year just one week ago. June 23rd, also a pretty critical area when you think we're bumping into an area that was support back on May 9th. Maybe that area becomes an area of resistance. We'll see where the 10-year trades right now. You're trading at 118.03, and we jump over to the VIX. Volatility index back near 30, 29.54 this morning. All right, let's jump over to the inflation data we got this morning. The Fed's preferred inflation measure rose 4.7% in May. Now, they say around multi-decade highs. That would be true. It is not an exact high, but it's pretty close to an exact high. Uh, both these numbers, though, just slightly less than the estimates we're looking for. So inflation held at, quote unquote, stubbornly high levels in May, though the monthly increase was slightly less than expected. That's from the number this morning. Core personal consumption expenditures rose 4.7% from a year ago. That is down 0.2 percentage points less than the previous month. Previous month coming in at 4.9. The market was looking for 4.8. So you have last month, it's 4.9. This month, they're saying we expect 4.8. We come in at 4.7. On a monthly basis, that same measure, which excludes food and energy, increased 0.3%. The market was looking for 0.4%. So you take out food and energy, which are more volatile, and they are having a huge impact right now. But you take out food and energy, it misses the estimate as well, slightly lower. Headline inflation, however, higher, rising 0.6% for the month. That was only 0.2% in April. That kept the year-over-year -year inflation at 6.3%, just like it was in April. March was the 6.6 .6 number, which was a record since January of 1982. Consumer spending, which accounts for nearly 70% of all economic activity in the U.S., personal income rose 0.5% in May. There's a lot of numbers out this morning, man. We're going to be, it's going to be an interesting open. Personal income rise 0.5% in May ahead of the 0.4 estimate. Okay, so personal income beats the estimates. These are pretty decent numbers right now. Market really didn't react that much. Income after taxes and other charges or disposable income declined 0.1% on the month and 3.3% from a year ago. So that is income after taxes and other charges or disposable personal income. Okay, disposable personal income declined 0.1% on the month and down 3.3% from a year ago. Spending adjusted for inflation falling 0.4% a sharp drop from the 0.3% gain in April. I mean, there's a lot here. We'll finish up the conversation, okay? Goods inflation rose 9.6%. Services, 47 Personal savings rate, still 5.4%. Lots of data. We'll be right back, folks. We'll talk to our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll get his take on some of the action. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. 
For all the details and to get your Tiger dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative 41 points. That's just more than 1%. The red NASDAQ 100, pretty similar territory, negative 135 points, negative 1.1% right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, do an outstanding job of breaking down the day's market action, folks. They set up hypothetical trade setups. You're always talking about defined risk for every single trade that they go through. Kevin Hanks, we got some economic data this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll start your viewers out with two things. Number one, inflation is peak. And number two, we're about between three and four weeks away from confirming that we're in a recession, Tommy. So when we get second quarter GDP in about, well, between three and four, three and a half weeks from now, it's going to confirm that we're in a recession. And now with this core PCE number coming down, personal consumption expenditures coming down, uh, I think inflation has peaked, Tommy. So that's what this market and the 10-year yield is, start, is trying to wrestle with right now. Now, what's working against the market? The U, you know, the U.S. dollar trading over 105, that's working against the U.S., against the stock market. But I think this is going to get interesting, Tommy, because stocks are down pre-open, but we'll see how long that lasts when, uh, you know, when you've got a 10 year now moving back towards and soon maybe under 3%, Tommy. You beat me to it. I was going to say, are we going to get a two handle today, man? We're back at, I think it's like 3.03 .03 right now. 3.024, uh, 3.02 .02, we'll call it. Uh, on the 10-year, and remarkable, we're right back to where we were, Kevin. I think it was a week ago, right? Is that what it is? Uh, even over above that level almost now. But, yeah, flirting with 3%. Some pretty strong number on the S&P. What do you think? And we talked about it a little bit yesterday. We're in the pre-market action. We'll find out, as you said, in about 10 minutes, man, when we hear that opening bell, what happens. Uh, we did see some movement on those numbers. But I agree with you, man. I mean, they came in 0.1% shy of the estimates on the headline and the core number. Um, and it seems like those numbers pointing to actually a slowing 
of the consumer as well in those numbers we got. But the market almost takes it in stride, Kevin. We saw 10 points maybe in the S&P, but you were down 50 points. So pretty marginal move on just a lot of data coming out at 830. Do you think it's just waiting for the opening bell? Or I was kind of surprised to see that little movement with kind of the economic numbers we got almost in the same mentality that you were thinking about there. Well, we'll see when, when the market goes. I don't know where the market goes. Uh, you know, I don't see, I don't know yet how the market will consume and digest the information that it's getting, but certainly yields are telling you something that inflation is not as scary as it was. And, you know, Tommy, I've been saying for a while, and I've been wrong for a short time, that I thought 3% on the tenure would be more stingy a level than it was because at one point it blew right through it yeah. re re real quickly. But I'm not really surprised that it's been this level has been more sticky of a price than it was before. So, uh, you know, this is going to be interesting how it plays out. But, you know, crude oil is now is, is soft again this morning, but it's still, Tommy, it is still the U.S. dollar that is kind of weighing on this market, although the U.S. dollar is. Uh, slipping back back towards unchanged here, even as we speak. It will be interesting to see if uh, we do get any pausing of that strength at all. Uh, maybe we get, and I don't want to call you know other currencies, but man, those other currencies in a week, the dollar's been strong. If we get a reversal on those fortunes, uh, interesting to see how that plays out with commodities, plays out in the gold contract, and plays out with the general market as well. I got a chart of the 10-year up here on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin. Pretty interesting. You go back to, on a price level, basically the lows of 2018. And yeah, we got quite a tail for the month of June. You make it all the way to 114.07, but it looks like we're going to finish out the month at about 118, which is interesting, Kevin, just back above where we were on the lows of 2018. So yeah, we got quite a shoot higher in a volatile market where you started the year off at about 130, not too surprising, maybe you overshoot things a little by a few points. Uh, we got some companies out with their numbers today. We're coming into the long weekend, Kevin. Uh, as traders, do you see this thing trailing off? I mean, we got some big economic numbers today, man. Um, maybe you make it through part of the day and, and people start trying to sneak out for, for Cape Cod and, and, and the Hamptons and, and the likes for the holiday weekend? I. You know, I, I, I don't think that you know, this was the last real significant economic data point that, that we're getting this week. This is what everyone was waiting for. So it wouldn't be surprised to see it trade a little bit this morning and then really trade off, Tommy. That, that's the way I think the market's going to be. Um, I think, you know, what... You know, th th this is going to play out, and it's going to be interesting. But just it's always I always start by mentioning where we are on the calendar. You always have to be cognizant. I think VIX, VIX being twenty nine and a half, we'll see how long that holds up at that level. Uh, there, you know, there there's gravity on the VIX this time of year. So the fact that we're near thirty is really defying gravity, Tommy, for this time of the year, and it shows the volatility that's out there. So, um, yeah, I expect volumes to lighten up here a little bit now into the end of the week and maybe midday, you know, and then pe people will start to turn off computers and move away for the weekend. But uh, remember, we're going into a holiday weekend, that's for sure. And the VIX, pretty remarkable, man. I got it up here again on the Thinkorswim platform. And you're talking about this year, and I know you know this, Gavin, but for the listeners, folks, I mean, you haven't seen a 17 handle on the VIX back to the week of January 10th, which is amazing to think about, Kevin. We're halfway through the year, and we basically have a VIX that's been holding pretty much above 20 uh, since the first week or two of the year. Absolutely extreme volatility, and I would say the VIX has been dead on, if if not a little light, with the volatility this market has gotten on a continual basis. Uh, we got some companies out with some action already this morning, Kevin. We're coming into, of course, the holiday weekend. Do you guys have a lineup for what you're talking about at 12 today yet? Three good names to look at. Tesla, Shopify, and Lowe's today. So um, a look at the home improvement space, a look at online e-commerce, and then, of course, why not... It, we could do a Tesla show every day. Elon <laughs> Musk is making some type of a new a new cycle, even when he's quiet around his birthday. So, yeah, we'll, we'll trade Tesla, Shopify, and Lowe's today. You guys had a great 
conversation going on yesterday about Amazon, man. I enjoyed that one. Tesla, another fan favorite. Shopify, we use Shopify, Kevin, at TFNN as our platform, outstanding platform um, for small businesses. But, man, quite a pullback from $176 to $33, below where we came into, folks, the year 2020, which is remarkable when you think about online sales and what's happened to that industry completely. Well, Kevin... We appreciate you taking the time, man. We appreciate the education on Fast Market every day. We don't talk to you on Friday, so you have a great couple of days. Have a great July 4th, man, and we will talk to you uh, in the second half of the year, coming up on July Happy 4th, 4th July, July 5th. July, Tommy. Have a great week. We, we can say hello to your dad. I sure will, man. You have a great week, weekend as well, Kevin. Folks, tune Definitely. in every trading day. You heard it. Three great, straight, three great stocks they'll be talking about today. We still got two trading days left, even though the holiday weekend approaching. And yeah, Tesla, man, chopping around in the 600s right now. 673, Tesla going to open down about 12 bucks, well off the highs at 1243. And you heard Shopify, man. Whew. You talk about uh, a pullback from 176 to $33. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the opening bell. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, folks. You got markets open. You're looking at an S&P negative by 38 points on the open right now. We see a little volatility right on the opening bell. You got a little bit of a lift right now. We're talking about pushing pre-market highs that we haven't seen since about 2 a.m. 37.84 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 catches a slight lift on the open as well. We're above where we were at about 4 in the morning. You're trading 11,575. The Dow is off 1% even at 30,674. And the Russell Negative by 21, as our man Basil Chapman says. The day, folks, very young. The day, very young indeed. Uh, crude, backing off on that open. Crude sees a 108 handle. Uh, yeah, you just snuck into a 107 handle briefly for crude. You get the gold contract, excuse me, spiking to 1825. You're at 1802 right now. And we got the 10-year. What are we talking about for a yield? We're going to see a two-handle, folks. Coming into the July 4th holiday, we're at 3.02 percent. Hold on to your hats. We could see it. We'll see. Uh, with the way this market is moving and with how fast it moves occasionally, two basis points in the 10-year, we usually get that type of action one way or the other over the span of 30 minutes to an hour. We'll see where it moves. Okay. What else we have going on, folks? Head on over to the front page of TFNN. We just talked about... Gold, you, you trade gold, folks, you better understand what's happening with the dollar index. You better understand what's happening with currencies and in this market as well. OK, you heard Kevin Hinks talking about it. We have the Tiger Forex report, folks. OK, as in Kevin Hinks talking about when this dollar, when the bonds, when that yield maybe pauses, you don't need to trade Forex to benefit from the information Teddy is putting in here every week, folks. He just kicked this thing off on Monday, the Tiger Forex report. He's got a weekly report out every Monday. We've been talking to Teddy. We talk to him every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can always check out those interviews as well, folks. If you head on over to our YouTube page, just search TFNN. You'll find our channel. You can see all the videos we post. We always break down the interviews themselves for their own video. You can watch those segments. Very informative. And he is kicking this thing off. It's $97 a month, folks. As a launching promotion, okay, you can become an inaugural member. You lock in 25% off forever. That 25% savings saves, stays with you forever as long as you subscribe. I think it brings the total down to $72.75. I got to pull it up exactly, but you get 25% off the $97 price. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So please, check it out. He put out a great report this past Monday. Uh, he's got another one coming up when we get back from the July 4th holiday on Tuesday. And he breaks down, folks. He puts the 30-year T-bond in there. He puts the crude oil market in there. He puts the dollar-yen in there, the dollar index, the euro-dollar, all of these. Very important, especially if you're trading commodities and the like. Check it out. Uh, and that special will only run for the month of July, as it's running right now into the month of July. So it's a one-month launch you become a charter member to teddy's service with the tiger forex report and lock in those savings check it out and what else do we have going on folks the tiger dollar sale this one only runs through the weekend and it's thursday okay it ends july 5th the tiger dollar sale that's tuesday when we get back you can get up to a 40 percent bonus on your tiger dollars folks if you're out there listening and you're a subscriber to any of our newsletters please Buy some Tiger Dollars, apply them to your account, and they're used for all forward transactions. If you're thinking about signing up for anything, check it out on the front page. Uh, that's only running a few more days. So buy some Tiger Dollars. Maybe you check out the Tiger Forex report when you do. You can still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. You spend those Tiger Dollars. You sign up for any service that you, you want to try at TFNN. We'll refund those Tiger Dollars if you're not happy after 30 days. So check those out on the front page of TFNN. Two great promotions. Tiger Dollar Sale only running through this weekend. And the Tiger Forex Report kicking off uh, this week with our man Teddy Kegstad. All right. Let's talk a little bit of inflation. So the markets are singling uh, that, yeah, we might have an inflation victory. That's the opinion piece from John Authors. Weakening economic growth has taken over as their biggest concern. I would agree there. That's a lot of what Kevin was just talking about. I had this article pulled up pre-show, going over the markets, thinking about what I was going to talk about. Maybe Kevin read this article, too. I don't know if he did. Uh, but he made some singular, similar arguments. Not sure he was using the same data. He was using some of the data out this morning. Now, this article, prior to the data we got this morning. OK, but it does have some important data in here I wanted to take a look at. So first we talk about GDP. Taking a look at GDP, we got the third quarter, uh, excuse me, the third re revision to GDP yesterday for the first quarter, negative 1.6 percent. When you put that on a chart, folks, OK, there's your COVID ridiculous pullback, uh, as you see. We got a negative number, and they don't happen often, folks, and we just got a 1.6. Pay attention to it because look on this chart, okay? Very seldom 
Do they come out on negative territory? And we are in one of those periods of time right now. With huge exception of COVID, this was the weakest U.S. growth since the spring of 2009. There's your acceleration that you saw there in the spring of 2009. So, as Mr. Authors writes in his opinion piece, had the effect of seemingly eliminating concerns about inflation, even though the battle against it has barely begun. Well said. I like that. It's, we just got the numbers this morning, right? We're right near record highs. Now, let's get into some of the data that he talks about, though, in here. Five-year, five-year break-evens, okay? The five-year, five-year forward break-even, which aims to capture, this is the part I'm reading right here, check it out, okay? It aims to capture the average inflation for the five years starting five years hence, and is the measure most closely followed by the Fed has now dropped below its level for much of 2018. Did you hear that? Below where we were at in 2018, before the pandemic, fast approaching the 2% number. The bond market is saying inflation is no longer anything to worry about. Check out that pullback, folks, okay? The problem is that inflation forecasts have shifted because growth has shifted. Now, you get into when the Fed may start easing. This is an important one, folks, because, man, time flies. It's already June 30th. Tomorrow is July. Before you know it, we're going to be forward some of those rate hikes that are already priced into this market, rightfully so, okay? The easing cycle, if you believe the Fed funds futures market, this is great stuff, so pay attention, will be well advanced by the end of next year. Did you hear that? The easing cycle will be well advanced by the end of next year. The market likes to get ahead of hiking cycles and easing cycles. If the easing cycle is going to be well advanced by the end of next year, when's the market going to start pricing that in? Not today. But at some point, it will. The chart shows the number of 25 basis point hikes implicitly priced in for each Fed meeting until early 2024. Over the last week, the belief in a swift start to easing has gained hold. And that, sadly, is because of the economy that might need some easing, unfortunately, uh, for the recession hit that it is possibly about to take. So we have the blue line, which is what the market was thinking a week ago, June 24th. And we have the black line, which is the number of hikes that are priced in now. What you have is you have hikes coming through about April. But then check it out, folks. Over the next nine months, you have some hikes. But then what do you have? You have almost a year of easing that pulls things back more than two percentage points. Right now, we're talking about eight hikes into March of 2023. And meanwhile, you're back to five and a half. So that would be, what, two and a half quarter points. So that's about 50 to 75 basis points of easing coming at you next year. If that happens, things change, folks. Okay, we got a couple other things we'll talk about in this article coming back. Um, dollar index paying into that one as well. Commodity uh, currency is very important to what's going on right now, folks. That's why I keep talking about that Tiger Forex report. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of a sell-off going on right now. Talk about a drop on the open. The S&P is now negative 1.7%, just like that. NASDAQ 100, negative 2%, man. Dow, negative 535. That's 1.75%. The Russell, off 2% as well. Bitcoin, watch out, folks. Bitcoin, an 18,000 handle coming into the long weekend. Always a dicey territory on the weekend, man. We saw that acceleration down to 17,000 briefly. Uh, and checking out the chart, if you're talking about an area of support and resistance, we're blowing through it, folks. This is the area that futures starting trading at. If you don't think that's an important area, I would disagree with you. That is the moment that futures began tradable on the CME. December of 2017, five years ago almost. Remarkable that it's been five years. You trade up to 70,000. We are now breaking below those levels. In terms of 20,650 is the high there. We're at 18,000. Check out those last three months, folks. 47,000 was the print on Bitcoin just in the month of April. We're still in June, and we are finishing basically at lows, 18,903. How about those three candles? Now, the original run on Bitcoin goes from about 70,000. We make three huge candles as well down to a low of 32,000. Okay, so that is what, 37,000 about? Yes, 37,000 was the A to B leg. You take it off the high of 48,000, folks, that is an A to B that brings you down to about 11,000. 10,000 is a nice round number. That's where you kick things off in October. And maybe that's where, finally, things begin to capitulate a bit at about 10,000. I mean, you see an area that we chopped around in for the better part of 2019 and 2020. Yeah, we got a wide range there, down to 4,200, up to a high of 14,000 in 2019. But all things considered, you broke below this 30,000 30, level. I was talking about it when it was at 30, folks. I wouldn't be touching until it gets to 10. You know, maybe you get back above 30 and you start building support and you can trade it again. Uh, but you're in no man's land here. And now that you're below where this thing started trading in futures, be careful out there, folks. Be careful in a big way. Excuse me. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other equities that are moving this morning. Um, yeah, and talking about finishing up this article. Excuse me. They're talking about the yen. They're talking about the dollar. They're talking about the ECB in here. Uh, continued dollar strength. The key component to this is the yen. Paul's remarks can be taken to show that he wouldn't be happy for the Japanese authorities to intervene and strengthen their currency. And it would certainly be difficult for any major central bank to do so. Such a thing without coordinating with others. Uh, there's a lot at stake here, folks, but they're talking about look at the economy, look at the potential for potential Fed easing uh, and inflation. Yeah, we're right in the middle of things, but that's not what the market is looking at right now, folks. The market's looking at a print of 1.6% declining GDP for the first quarter. 
Okay, let's jump down some of the stocks moving. Uh, Restoration Hardware. They were trading down about 7 8% pre-market. They lower their guidance. Let's see how they're trading right now. Probably not helped by a market selling off. Yeah, you're off 10.7%. Some of these equities, man. Uh, Pre-COVID, you're at about where we're at right now. You come into 2020 at about 215. You're trading right now at 212. Quite a monthly decline. And there's your acceleration. So they come out with a revision last night of their forecast. They drop on the open as well. You're down to 211 right now in restoration. They lower the outlook for the year. Anticipating consumer demand for its products will continue to soften in the back half of the year. And I believe I saw in here, let's see the, uh, yeah, because the way they summed it up here, I think, was deteriorating ec economy and a slowdown in home sales. That's not going to be just them, folks. Um, if they're talking about economic indicators and a slowdown in home sales, always interesting, though, when a company tries to say, hey, it's not us, it's the economy, right? Sometimes it's going to be the company, and they're going to be blaming the economy. This situation, I'm not sure, I'm sure that's the case with the numbers that we're getting with the declining GDP. Uh, this is what to be careful of, folks. Some great conversations in the den yesterday talking about multiples, right? This market can become very expensive again if we start to get revisions on earnings. Those are the types of revisions right there. We got restoration hardware dropping 10% over the night after they lower the full year financial guidance. <whistles> Be careful. All right, what else do we have happening? Constellation, they beat estimates by 14 cents, 266 a share of revenue. Above estimates, upbeat full year forecast. Yeah, they say they added 1%. When I pulled it up this morning, it was actually a little bit lower. Yeah, and we're down 4%. By the time I pulled it up, they were actually lower pre-market on those numbers. Now, you got the market trading lower. This one's been one of the strongest equities out there this year. I was talking to Kevin Hinks about it yesterday. I mean, look at this chart. All you've been doing is chopping around in a consolidation area between about 211 and 240. If you're looking to get into Constellation, uh, maybe this market trades a little lower. It takes Constellation with it. You see the consolidation it's been in, about 210, 212, somewhere in there. If it gets to that level, maybe that's an area you could start to nibble on Constellation. Still, though, 20 bucks from where we're at right now. Strong numbers, and they're getting punished, man, in a big way. As this market is down about almost 2% itself, Constellation down about 4%. Always worrying when you get something like that, right? As in you get beaten by four, 14 cents a share, revenue above estimates, upbeat full-year forecast. They're a little bit higher pre-market, and they sell off on the open. Be careful. And Walgreens Boots out with their numbers. Uh, they were a little bit lower as well. Let's see how they opened up. Down 4%, pretty similar action on pretty strong numbers as well. They come out with the numbers this morning. You sell off a little bit. You make a new low on the open, Walgreens Boots. 96 cents a share, 4 cents above estimates. Revenue beat as well. They reaffirm the full-year guidance. These are not misses, folks, okay? Not in this environment at all. They beat on revenue. They beat on earnings. And they reaffirm their full-year guidance with single-digit, low single-digit adjusted earnings growth. And the market's like... 4%, we're taking it from you this morning. You should have done better. It's a dicey market, man, because that's pretty decent numbers when you talk about everything going on and the surprises that we've seen in this market. All right, what else we got going on? How about Amazon? They they did do a great segment yesterday, folks, on Amazon. Uh, is this talking to me? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, they did a great segment yesterday on Fast Market at 12 on Amazon. Not talking about this, okay? And I do have some Amazon in retirement account, folks. There was one analyst that came out yesterday talking about that Amazon Web Services is going to have a $3 trillion valuation itself at one point. Uh, the kicker of that one was that they didn't say when. Well, I could probably say the same thing, folks. Uh, Amazon's going nowhere. Eventually, it'll be worth $3 trillion. Eventually, AWS will be worth $3 trillion. Uh, I'm not sure when, though. That's the kicker. Nonetheless, I am a bull on Amazon in the long term, especially when you get these types of pullbacks. And this is the part of the reason why. You know, they can spend money on some of these content deals. And this is why you've seen Netflix pull back so sharply. This has been one of the hampers to Disney in terms of the money and the profitability. Now, Amazon just spent, I think it was $1.6 billion, let's see, as they scoop up uh, UEFA deal for coverage in the UK. Yes, yeah, so let's see. The value may be about 20% higher than the previous cycle. The number's not out there. 
but that's up from about 1.4 billion euros, 1.5 billion dollars. So you're talking about maybe 1.7 billion euros, so 1.8 billion US dollars. Now they had just pulled out of the competition for the Indian Premier League, which ended up going to Disney and one other company over there, I forget the Reliance was it, one of those, but those went for like 6.7 billion dollars, okay? Amazon, though, they're in the business, man. And sports content, there's going to be nothing like sports content for some of these streaming companies, folks. And they're going to have to pay for it because the sports know it. Stay tuned, folks. Markets, we're basically at session lows. S&P's off 1.7%. We'll be right back. To Sharpening the your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the markets basically at session lows right now, folks. Interesting coming into a long weekend right now. It's Thursday, as Kevin Hanks was talking about. That was the last big data drop. We got oil numbers at 1030, uh, crude oil inventory numbers at 1030 out. But we're basically past the last economic number and not a good indicator when you got the S&Ps down 70 points. Not sure it's going to be a cascade to... Um, disaster territory, but you're talking about an S&P now off 200 points from where you were trading at just yesterday. Uh, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, man. We were talking about Amazon. You're now under 104. That's back to back 5% days pretty much for Amazon. You were just trading at 114 on Tuesday, let alone the 118 high over the weekend coming into the Monday open when we traded up to 118. I mean, Percentage-wise, just a huge pullback right now. Recent lows 
you're right there, man. At 101.26 is the low. Just recently, we were down there at about 101.43. What is the exact? 101.43, I believe. Amazon trading lower. We jumped to some of the other stocks. Tesla. There's an article up there on uh, Bloomberg about Tesla talking about a wipeout of, I think, $350 billion in market cap this quarter alone. Tesla, negative 1.8% today. S&P is right now approaching that level. You get the NASDAQ. Look at this. NASDAQ's off 2.4%. S&P's off 1.8%. We jump over to the big dog, Apple. Down 3% for Apple shares. You jump to Microsoft shares, down about 2% at 255. The low for Microsoft, 241. Yeah, this is getting a little dicey, folks. <laughs> S&P's off 70, Dow off 560 right now. And let's just see our curiosity again as I was talking about that comp. NASDAQ composite low, 10,565. Remember, the 382 of the entire move higher, folks, from the 2009 lows to the COVID highs, a 382 retracement, 10,500. We're 400 points away from that, and you're down 275 today. You know, I talked about it before. We'll wrap up the program as we come into it, folks. Put those numbers on your radar and make sure that you're at least prepared if the market goes to that level that you're okay because there's nothing stopping this S&P from hitting 3,200, folks. You got the 382 of the larger move, the 618 of the COVID acceleration from 2,100 to 4,800, and uh, the NASDAQ comps basically there. So nothing stopping the other indices from getting there as well. All right, folks, thanks for starting your day. Should be an interesting one. Stay tuned. Don't forget about the Tiger Dollar Sale running this week only, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Thursday.